Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right. Yep. We've got an AD that's saying FSU needs to stop barking. And FSU has gone on the attack, especially against the ACC. And the ACC is trying to squash this, but it's not going over so well. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. Yeah, nothing's over as far as FSU is concerned. They think there's been a lot of shenanigans going on, and it, it could very well be that's the case. We're going to get into that. Here's a story by Jackson Bakich. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, from uh, Noel Game Day. It says, FSU goes for the jugular, calls on ACC to release any knowledge related to the college football playoff snub. And obviously what this has to do with is you had two teams. You had Alabama and Texas get into the playoff with one loss each. FSU was completely undefeated and had won their conference championship on top of that. And they're sitting there going, how is there not collusion involved in this in some way? Because you've got ESPN, you got the college football playoff, you got the SEC, and two of those teams, Alabama is in the SEC, and Texas is going into the SEC this year. So obviously they're like, collusion! They're screaming it. And the college football playoff is like you lost your quarterback, you're in the ACC, you know, they didn't come out and say that, but they don't have a ton of respect for that uh, league. So, you know, if something happens and you lose your quarterback, well, there's their excuse to kick you out of the playoff, which is exactly what they did. And the ACC didn't exactly go to bat for them. And then on top of it, the commissioner of the ACC was part of the alliance to keep the uh, college football playoff from going to 12 games, which should have happened in 2023. He didn't feel like it was time. It just didn't feel right to him him and the other two commissioners. So they fought Greg Sankey of the SEC and said, no, we're going to stay at four. Well, how'd that work out for the Alliance? Especially the ACC. It didn't work out at all. It was a very, very poor decision. And now here are the uh, ramifications of it. And FSU feels extremely cheated. And I have a, uh, a lot of empathy for the FSU uh, fan base because we've been going through something very similar at UT. We've been attacked by the NCAA multiple times now, the one attack was justified, and that was over uh, Jeremy Pruitt. I understood that. But the one over Nico was ridiculous. It was absurd over a plane ride, so they went after us. So we pretty much just kicked him in the teeth, and we're not done. Use the false loop. You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home. Yeah, when we're finished with them, there's not going to be much left. I'll just go ahead and tell you. And I don't care. I really don't. But I've seen the same thing happen with FSU. They get creaked by the college football playoff. Then they get attacked over something stupid, ridiculous, where an offensive coordinator drove a kid to an NIL meeting, which they're allowed to have NIL. Last time I checked, the Supreme Court voted 9 to nothing on that. Oh, no, he drove him there. So he gets a two-year show cause. They lose five scholarships. He gets a three-game suspension, I mean, and like a million-dollar fine. Give me a break. It's ridiculous. So I have a lot of empathy for the FSU folks because we've been going through something very similar. So now that my first rant is over, and I say first because who knows? There could be a second rant come out of me. I, you never know. I like to rant from time to time. <laughs> this story goes on to talk about Attorney General of Florida, Ashley Moody. She sent a, ci a civil investigation demand. And again, this is the Attorney General of Florida. So this is, you know, they're not asking, they're demanding. They want all communications to and from the SEC, the ACC, and the NCAA, ESPN, and all 10 conferences in FBS football, as well as the compensation of the committee members. I have not heard anything on that. I'm waiting. They also want any other ex executed agreements between the ACC and Disney. Then ESPN came back and accused Florida State of potentially committing a felony in late February for attempting to unseal the textbook trade secrets of the ACC's grant of rights. And if you know anything about those grant of rights, they can only be seen in secret. You're not allowed to expose them in any way, even though Florida is a sunshine state. And I think you even have to have special glasses to see the dadgum thing. I don't know. For some reason, maybe it's written on special constitutional paper. Who knows? It's just an agreement. Trade secrets. Give me a break. <laughs> you serious? But what just recently happened 
and this is an ongoing lawsuit between FSU and the ACC, FSU asked for all documents and communications related to the decision by CFP to exclude Florida State from the championship series, and now they're asking for it. So not only is the Florida AGs asking, but Florida State is too. And they're in a lawsuit in two different states, North Carolina and Florida. And, and remember, ACC ran to North Carolina the day before FSU filed their papers in Florida. How in the world they got it done that quickly is beyond me, but it was obvious they were trying to get in front of them. There was no question about that. And here Skip Foster broke it. He said the ACC court filing in Leon County reveals that they've requested all that information. He actually put the document in a, a tweet. Now we're going to get into something I did not see. This was a couple of months ago, and this was the UNC athletic director. I didn't realize he had chimed in on this, and he chimed in in a major way. And his name's Bubba Cunningham. I don't know that I've known a Bubba. And Bubba made these comments on the Adam Gold Show in August, and he said, I don't think it's good for our league, for them, Florida State, to be out there barking like that. He said, I'd rather see them be a good member of the league, support the league, and if they have to make a decision, then so be it. Pay the exit fee. The exit fee is $570 million, by the way. Well, it's $120 plus the grant of rights. Wait for your grant of rights that you've given, and then in 2036, when those rights return to you, do whatever you want. Oh, yeah, I bet FSU appreciates his help. Oh, I didn't know you wanted to get involved with the discussion, Mr. Helper. <laughs> He's a healthy helper, isn't he? And FSU's board chair, Collins, he said, we have been criticized for having the discussions publicly. What many people critical of our decisions don't know is that in Florida, we have the Sunshine Law, which dictate that any discussions must be held in a public forum. Of course, we would rather have these conversations privately, especially when it's related to legal action, but we cannot. And here, uh, Bubba had a little bit more to say. This again is by Jackson Bakich. And Bubba said that he felt like the price that Florida State's buyout should be more than the number currently being floated around. He said, if Florida State thinks that they have greater value than our league and want to leave, wouldn't we ask to share in the upside of that greater value, Cunningham said, so I'm not sure $500 is going to be enough. Maybe we need $600 or $700 million to get out of the league. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> so a half a billion dollars is not enough for Florida State to leave. He wants them to pay six, seven hundred million. How about a trillion? Is a trillion enough? <laughs> God. Woo! So this is kind of surprising to me. You wouldn't think the AD at UNC would be that harsh about trying to keep the ACC together because you know the Power Two, which is now the Power Two, let's just call it what it is, which is SEC and Big Ten, you know they want North Carolina. North Carolina would be a prize because neither the SEC nor the Big Ten are in North Carolina anywhere. Now, of course, NC State would have a say in that as well because they're a big school. But North Carolina is sort of the crown jewel because of the basketball and all that, and their football's been pretty darn good as well. So I'm a little surprised they're uh, talking like that, but it really doesn't matter because whatever FSU gets, any other team will get in the ACC as far as a uh, walk-away price or whatever you want to call that. So needless to say, old Bubba over at UNC is not exactly uh, buddying up with FSU, and it's really getting uh, ugly between FSU and the ACC. And I can tell you how this is going to play out. Actually, I won't tell you. Dalton, tell them how it's going to play out. It'll get worse before it gets better. Yeah, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Roadhouse. This has been one of the most intriguing stories, and I'm really I'm rooting for FSU to get out of the ACC because they want out. They're a big program. They deserve to be in either the SEC or Big Ten. And I think the ACC is going to dissolve at some point, most likely. I could see Clemson going to the SEC. I see several teams. Um, there's at least seven that can go somewhere, Miami, NC State, and then, of course, uh, Virginia and Virginia Tech. All seven of those will be prizes and would almost certainly go into the Big Ten SEC. And then we'll see those become the super leagues that they're going to be. They're already taking all the money from the college football playoff. They want like 58% of all that money, and uh, I've given you breakdowns of that. It's it's going to be a $30 million difference between the SEC and the ACC. Actually, I'll show you that breakdown. This is your college football playoff money distribution that they're working on, and the SEC and Big Ten are going to get like 58% total, and then they're going to leave about 30% for the ACC Big 12, and then 10% will go to the rest. And you're going to end up with a 10 to $12 million difference between the SEC and these other two leagues and the Big Ten. 
And Big Ten's a little bit less because you got more teams in that league. But you can see the breakdown there. That's college football playoff. And this is the total monies that each team will get over the the next few years. There's almost a $30 million difference between Big Ten and uh, ACC and Big 12. Oh, no. No. (laughs) No. (laughs) SEC is about 20 plus million. And that number is only going to increase because you got to remember the ACC is in that contract through probably 2036. Now we'll see how this plays out because they've got to make a decision at ESPN whether to exercise that in February of 2025. Are they going to exercise it? Because the ACC may look very different by that time. I mean, you're talking about February. That's what, 10 months from now? Things could look very different. They may not want that deal especially if a bunch of teams exit and realize ESPN values SEC contract over the ACC. So they're going to do what's best for that deal, in my opinion. So things are probably going to change dramatically over the next uh, several months and certainly over the next year or two. You're going to see 50 years of movement in about probably 24 months would be my guess. It may be less than that. So anyway, I'm going to keep an eye on this. This affects the SEC big time. And I would like to see some real quality clubs enter, and I'd like to see that college football playoff go from 12 to 16 because it gives more teams an opportunity to win a national championship. And I think that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And 16 is the max I would ever want. I think anything more than that, and it turns into something, you know, the regular season won't mean enough. But uh, they're probably going to move to 14 for 2026. And then after that, at some point, they'll probably go to 16. And they've got to figure out some buys and things like that. But all this is going to the uh, super conferences. Eventually, you can just see it. So anyway, if you like this content and you want to keep up with all this stuff, just hit this little button right here. This is my subscribe button. doesn't cost you a dime, and it helps me out. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that. And also, hit that like button. And right here is a uh, video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy based on your, your recent viewing history. And that has something to do with the algorithm. I don't know the algorithm. Who are you? I am the architect. I created the matrix. I've been waiting for you. Yeah, the architect confuses me, to say the least. Anyway, we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jack.